Okay, hello and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Julius Lienemann. I'm a solution engineer for end-user computing in Germany, and I'm yeah, going to talk to you in the next roughly 26 minutes and 45 seconds about um, yeah, extended reality in the enterprise and how you can do this with Workspace ONE UEM and get these devices under control. So let's get started. Um, of course, if there are questions, we can answer them afterwards. Just, just come to us, and uh, yeah, we are going to uh, answer those questions. Looks to be uh, a small session in this case, anyway. So, let's see. Does it work? Yes. Um, just obviously remembering, when was the first time when you were experiencing immersive technologies? Um, just, just, just think about it, like was it in the IKEA world or whatever, where you were just, just having a look at when the first time you had some kind of glasses on your, on your eyes. For most of us, it was that one here. So actually, when you were having Pokemon Go and uh, having some kind of overlay for the first time running, actually, well, with these things uh, around and, and, and getting then some kind of yeah, augmented reality on the device. So that was really the first touch point a couple of years ago now. Actually, it was in July 2016. So it's seven years ago already that um, we were experiencing this with Pokemon Go. And since then, obviously, it, a lot of things happen then. I won't go, go through all of those now, but these are just some examples where you see augmented or virtual reality integration in the enterprise. So um, it is kind, kind of a lot. So I mentioned the IKEA example where you have something in a box and you can see an augmented reality where to place your locker and stuff like that. But um, on top of that, there are more examples than you would know. So let's think about a virtual locker room or what Amazon is doing. That How does this, this sweater fit to me? And then use artificial intelligence, not artificial, augmented reality to, uh, to get it actually uh, onto, onto your body. So there are many examples here. And um, uh, in the end, also looking at the devices itself, um, when, you, when you see here around the numbers of how many devices have been sold, um, actually for the Quest 3, there are no, no numbers yet, but when you say, see, take a look here, in the gaming area, it was from uh, 50 million Oculus Quest sold. So there is a device mass out there, and this is, of course, consumer, but we also see this more and more in the enterprise, and um, also with, with Meta, bring uh, HR, um, bring VR to work. So um, there are lots of use cases around it. But, and that's the point, times are changing. So uh, one year ago, we weren't talking about it, but all this stuff around artificial intelligence is, of course, also having an impact on how do we work, how do we perceive work in our workplace, and how do we design it. Therefore, obviously, when we think about this, how would a workplace of the future look like? And what I did is actually, I was before that session, I was preparing, doing a bit of Google activity and, and always asking, how does the future workplace look like and go to the image search. When you do that, actually the first thing it throws out is something like that. So, well, okay, is this a future workplace? I don't know. Um, do you feel comfortable with it? I would say, no, this is not a future workplace. This is more reminding me on, you remember that one here? So if, if you're not too old, this was the iRobot thing. Really, when you Google future workplace, this is what you get. Next example. Well, who, do you remember that one here? Well, that was minority report. And well, we are actually getting closer because yeah, He's not wearing any glasses, but he's doing something in a in, in, in virtual reality environment. And therefore, yes. So this could be something around the workplace of the future, driven by augmented and virtual reality. And then, obviously, the obvious example. So uh, we can't have an augmented or virtual reality presentation without um, having a quick look of what was announced earlier this year. Thinking about it, yes, would this be the workplace of the future? Maybe. I think it is getting closer already, um, and there are different dependencies on, on, on when this would be a workplace of the future and what the example would be. But in the end, it's just food for thought and think about how can a workplace look like and what is clearly and no brain at all, these devices, they will have an impact on the workplace of the future, and that's why we also have to care about it. Now, taking a look at how are enterprises today leveraging XR technology, so extended reality, uh, reality technologies, when we take a look at today, we just need to have one step back and think about, well, the alphabet soup of XR. 
really, I was talking now already a bit about XR, AR, VR, and they are all different, and they all have different use cases. So when we think, think about the first example here, and this is around assisted reality, also an AR, this is where we see also specialized devices where you're just having an overlay, but you can still, have, st still see the reality through your eyes. So in the end, it is static content delivered directly to your line of sight. That's, that's the first uh, aspect we need to care of. The second one is, I just need to go here, is augmented reality, where we're just one, one step further already. So you're having overlays above your own environment in that sense, and you can interact with them in real time. So in the end, it's one step further into a virtual reality world, and we have seen this with HoloLens and Magic Leap, so HoloLens probably something you, have, you, you remember, of course. And the third aspect, and this is something where, where it really starts to get interesting and where we were seeing also the other devices and the, uh, the, the, the Apple direction, is the virtual reality, where you're having really full glasses, uh, fully immersive, and um, well, you still have a pass-through capability, but that is then just something which is recorded from the device in front of you. So this would be something we see these days with MetaQuest, Pico, and Vive devices. So the MetaQuest 3, one of the latest devices, um, HTC Vive Focus or Pico 3, 4 Pro. So there are lots of devices out there. We will take a look at it um, uh, uh, a bit later. All this is summarized under extended reality, and we are looking at providing solutions for all those devices and all those use cases. Actually, thinking about what are the use cases in the enterprise, what are top enterprise use cases we see today, because when I talk to my customers, I'm always getting kind of the messaging, yeah, well, this is nice, but aren't you using those devices for gaming and for watching 360 videos? But no, there's, there's much more behind it. And as actually also driven by the pandemic, there were also use cases around it to interact directly with people being virtually in the same room. Um, and then it is around training, for example, just, just having something um, when you basically you can sit before you fly the plane, you can sit in the cockpit and have everything in front of you and control it how you need it. So as an example, also augmented workflows, virtualizing design, remote assistance. These are kind of kind of clear examples. One of the things I also wanted to uh, to highlight is of course the the collaboration part because it's just what I said. So of course these conferences here they are great and hopefully they will stay like they are. But on the other side, it's also when someone is in the States and someone is here in Barcelona, how can we get people into the same room virtually and let them collaborate with each other? So that's one of the also most important aspects here. And there's more around it, of course. So when we take a look here at enterprise use cases for XR, we had some of them, but looking here, working uh, in, in, in production or manufacturing, when you're just actually at, at the belt and need an overlay, um, having things like knowledge workers here in media production where you get these things, design virtualization, augmented workflows. I think this is something we see quite a lot in healthcare. So just having a lot of healthcare customers taking a closer look at um, how can we have that overlay or even working from remotely when you are not there. Um, just, just thinking about political crisis and, and, and issues we have these days when you can work with some kind of augmented reality workflows where you're not there but you can help people which are yeah, somewhere out there in a crisis area, for example. So these are use cases we're typically seeing. And um, of course, well, the benefits are effectiveness, productivity, reduction of complex tasks, reduction of travel, just, just having yeah, people better together in that case. Now. This is all nice, but what is holding us back from adopting these devices more and more in the enterprise? Actually, not sure if you have worked already with such devices or if you had them uh, in your work environment, played around with them. When you want to integrate such a device in the enterprise, and that's always what I say, it's kind of difficult because take a device you buy in a, buy in a retail store out of the box, and well, the first thing you will see is kind of um, YouTube 360 or getting some kind of fancy games on it. And obviously, when being in the enterprise, you don't want people to play or watch Netflix. And actually, actually you want to focus them on the task they want to do with the device. And this is where an enterprise integration comes in. Because staging these devices and having only enterprise content on them is kind of the first thing which is getting difficult when you're not having anything or when you just have the out-of-the-box experience. So it means what we would like to solve is, for example, getting the device in the state like you as an enterprise wanted 
having the device managed, controlled, secured as well, and integrated into your environment. So if you, for example, have internal connectivity requirements, not everything goes directly through the internet, then actually tunneling connections to your intranet are some things which are important. Deploying applications, kind of a no-brainer. You have your enterprise applications. How do you get them on the device? Well, yes, you may sideload them. That would be one option. But isn't it better, and like with mobile devices, to, to, to deploy them over the air? Kind of uh, absolutely clear. Also, thinking about things like identity and access. Really, how do you get access to your solutions in that sense? And um, how can you log in? Ideally, with a single sign-on, not requiring uh, yeah, all the time username, password from the users, or even having things like multi-factor authentication if this requires your back-end. And last but not least, analytics. How are people using the devices? What are they making out of it? Um, are they adopted at all? And of course, the user experience itself. Um, when people have to search for their enterprise apps, it's kind of difficult. So that's where things like a kiosk mode, for example, are coming in, where you just start up the device. You have kind of a single sign-on login, and it starts up into a kiosk mode. And people are just only seeing the apps they need and what they want and uh, getting them secured. So. What we are having as a solution here for that one is Workspace ONE UEM plus XR Hub. And um, yeah, let me explain this a bit more in detail to you. There are two sides of that one here. The first one is Workspace ONE UEM. It's really to get the device into the state you want it, to stage the device, to manage the device, support it, and um, actually have all the deployment tasks simplified uh, and also at a scalable approach. Because when you have to touch all these devices manually and to install and sideload the applications, it's just also consuming a lot of time. We will take a look at the typical use cases in a second uh, as well. The other part is the XR Hub. So when I was talking about getting directly into an enterprise integration, having some kind of a kiosk mode or having a launcher application, this is where XR Hub comes in. And it does much more, but really just understand the first one is where how to get the device controlled, how to get the device enabled. The second one is how to get people productive with the device and how to get people working with it um, uh, in the enterprise. Now, taking a closer look at the first part, the Workspace ONE UEM side, um, well, what we would like to solve it, we talked about it already. But the first thing to understand is also we support this here across the extended reality device set. So there are some differences between Workspace ONE UEM, so managing the device, and the XR hub, getting the kiosk mode or getting a launch application on the device. But the first thing is, is the streamlined onboarding, and this is supported for all these device types here at the, at the bottom. So we enroll the device like we enroll iPhones, like we enroll Android devices. Actually, in most cases, we are talking here about Android uh, for, as an operating system. iOS, as we know, is coming at a later point. Um, but the first thing is really onboard the device and have something like uh, um, an, an automated process where you don't have to uh, yeah, do all the things manually. Second aspect then, as we talked about it, is simplified app deployment, getting apps pushed, so having in-house applications, having enterprise applications, and just install them remotely on their device. So without uh, site loading or plugging in anything, it's just deployed like you would also today deploy a device to your iOS, iOS or Android device. The third aspect is also lifecycle management. So what we hear from our customers is these devices, they get stolen quite a lot. So um, when they are out there somewhere, um, it happens, of course, quite often that someone is just taking a device away, away. And when you manage those devices, you at least can remote reset the devices and um, have some kind of security applied that, uh, well, no sensitive information is being, being stolen. So that's one part of the life cycle that you can securely remote manage the device, reset the device, but it's even on top of that, apply policies like having a passcode on the device, having certain functions disabled and enabled. So that's the whole life cycle and security management with from the end to the beginning that until your, your device needs to be reinstalled or reset. Third aspect is also remote, circuit, remote worker support. 
And this obviously is, is really about when your people are out in the field and they call you, something is not working like it should. You can remote control the device, you can dial in onto the device, you can push new configurations or just, just, just have an impact on the device. Or in the best case, people can even re-enroll their device on their own um, uh, if this is required um, uh, after a factory reset, for example. So really having the full aspect of remote worker support. As, as I said, it may differ how to do these things from device to device and from platform to platform. But um, what we actually do with it, and, and, and when you ask your question, how do I get a device into the management? Hey, I'm workspace, having Workspace One today, and how do I get devices under control? So the first thing is here is a great tech zone article in the VMware tech zone, which is explaining you step by step how can I enroll an XR device into Workspace ONE UEM and get it controlled. Of course, you need to apply your policies and all that stuff. That's clear. But first, how do I get, do I get the devices enrolled? This is this article here on the right. Um, it's just, just really perfect and uh, straightforward how to manage those devices. Yeah, and the, and the second part of it is just, just an overview of what do we support today from a Workspace ONE UEM perspective. We were talking a bit about the device types already. Um, I would say we are having I think all devices which are which we have seen in the enterprise are manageable. So it is it is kind of just just very little amount of devices which are not supported. The three big ones: Pico, MetaQuest, and Wife. And also when there are still Hololens out there or Magic Leap devices, or we also have have Realware. It's not not on here now um, because this is a bit more focused on the on the whole virtual reality area, but. In general, we have a solution for all those device types, and um, yeah, I help you with getting them enrolled uh, just, just into Workspace ONE UEM. This is great. Your device is managed now and controlled. Everything is like it should be. That's the moment where Workspace ONE XR Hub comes in, because the first step is, yes, we are controlling the devices. The second step then is, now let's make them enterprise ready. And when we're taking a look at it, what we can do with Workspace ONE XR Hub, it's, as I said, from the logic here, uh, logic um, uh, is it, you know, when you're having Android devices, there's a launcher application, and this is also some kind of the launcher for XR devices. Um, the first thing you get is, is a unified app catalog, starting the device, starting XR Hub, in, and then getting into, into some kind of a kiosk mode. You're having a unified catalog where you only see your enterprise applications which are relevant to them. And of course, you as an enterprise are configuring which applications are relevant for you. Second step then is, let's start an application. This could be a web app. It could be an app installed on the device itself. Um, does this app require multi-factor authentication? How do you log on to this application? Having a single sign-on, having if required conditional access, all these are things which are doable with the XR Hub, which is, of course, then having quite a uh, positive uh, impact on the user experience. Third aspect is what we see is these devices are quite often shared between users and enterprises. So you can do a check-in and check-out, means one user having the device during shift A, then logging in, shift A is, is, is finished, handing over the device to the second user, shift B is starting, logging a different user in, so you're having a personalized experience. Yeah, and the, and the other aspect, I also wonder, okay, yes, you can ex access any app. The other aspect I wanted to highlight is, we are having customers using XR Hub who have fully customized the experience. Uh, actually, it looks like you're walking in into their reception in their main office location because they customize it in, in 3D as an immersive experience. So um, we are going to see a couple of screenshots uh, in, in a second where you may also um, uh, can, can, can understand it better. But you're getting a full customizable UX and UI branded to your enterprise organization. Yeah, and, and last one, I'm also having a different slide on that one. You can also stream XR apps from a virtual desktop. So there's a horizon integration. But yeah, let me come back to that in, a, in, in two minutes, actually. Taking a closer look at the XR Hub itself, well, you can see it here. I hope it's big enough. Um, we have some kind here of a VMware branded office, obviously, but um, uh, this could be your office and this could be your, um, uh, your look and feel of the XR Hub itself. 
Then here you're having the catalog, so it's, it's an overlay, visual overlay, and then you can see here how it's starting the applications with a virtual keyboard. So um, in, in the end, from a feature perspective, you get a customizable workspace enterprise with the user experience and um, uh, have this across all your virtual devices. And again, kiosk devices uh, or, or kiosk mode is also something which is supported there. Um, we're having some good videos out there, but one last aspect um, uh, I just wanted to cover is just what I mentioned earlier, is um, our partnership here with NVIDIA um, to, for, for CloudXR. Uh, when you're having computing extensive workloads, you can stream actually your Horizon workload to the Workspace ONE XR Hub and have then this, this three-tiered combination of XR Hub, Workspace ONE UEM, Horizon with the NVIDIA Cloud XR integration. So um, in the end, this is when you have really something like computing intensive 3D graphics, um, some, 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 some CAT uh, requirements for, for uh, vGPUs, um, this is what you can do then here, stream those with via NVIDIA to the XR Hub and have then um, also those workloads running in the back end but streamed to your XR device and having that experience as well. So just uh, recently uh, announced uh, as, as, as a GA version. So coming to an end, um, why Workspace ONE for XR management? I think we provided some arguments for it. Um, Managing the device, just to wrap up with Workspace ONE UM, getting the device under control, having the XR Hub, just to have that enterprise kind of experience, just to have everything um, locked in into your launcher mode. With intelligence, we didn't cover that too much, um, but you can get all the analytics stuff and all the information, how are the devices used and what is the, the, the user perception from the device perspective. Assist was the part around the remote control we have seen, just dialing in remotely on the device, providing remote support into the device. And the last aspect was remote uh, VMware Horizon with streaming XR up to, from a virtual desktop. So it's kind of an end-to-end -end solution for your devices and everything you need. And well, the best aspect of it is if you want to test drive it, you can do it here at the VMware booth just, well, 100 meters over there, we are having a couple of devices and um, there are colleagues who can just actually show you the experience, how to manage the device on the one hand side, but also then also how does it look with the XR hub and uh, the kiosk mode and the enterprise integration for, for those kinds of devices. Yeah, this is kind of closing the session for, to you, for today. Um, I hope only if it's just, just a few people of you, but it was interesting. And um, if there are questions, of course, yeah, just, just come to me and, and, and ask me. It would be great. Thank you.